old family photos. This is where people say, hey, you got your eyes from your mom or something like your mouth is like your dad. Yeah, over here, I don't see any resemblance, but you know what I'm talking about, right? That's me, by the way. So why do we resemble our parents? Well, you might know the answer to this. You might say, hey, it's the genes, man. Genes are what we call the unit of inheritance. Basically, we say that genes gets passed along from parents to their kids, and that's why we look similar to them. But what exactly are these genes? Let's find out. To answer this question, we need to look deep into a cell. So let's say this is one of the cells that compose my body. Now the cells have a lot of stuff inside of it, right? It also has a nucleus, that's what we are interested in. If we were to look deep into the nucleus, then you will find some squiggly thread-like structures. You know what these thread-like structures are called? These are called the DNA, DNA. And if I were to zoom into a small portion of that DNA, then you might be seeing something which is familiar, right? You may have seen these things in movies and cartoons and everything. You may be wondering, what exactly is this DNA? We make a big deal about it, right? Now, without getting into too much of detail, DNA can be thought of as an instruction manual which is present to build me, if this is my DNA. It contains the instructions to build everything about me, from the tip of my hair, through the guts, to the tip of the toes. Every single detail of how to build me is present in this DNA. So it's a long instruction manual of how to build Mahesh. Similarly, your DNA is an instruction manual to how to build you. The DNA of a chimpanzee is an instruction manual to build a chimpanzee. And did you know that about 99% of its DNA matches with human DNA? That may not be all that surprising because you already know, you might have heard of that, we are very close relatives of chimps, right? But what may be surprising is to learn that about 50% of a fruit fly's DNA also matches with ours, 50%. The fact that our DNA is so common to other animals actually is an evidence for the theory of evolution. But of course, we'll talk more about evolution in future videos. So anyways, this DNA is super important. But where do you think this instruction manual came from? Any guesses? Our parents. That's what gets passed along from our parents to the kids. And if you're wondering, wait a second, Shouldn't we have two copies of this, one from the mom and one from dad? Well, then you are absolutely right. We have two copies of this DNA set. One we got from the mom and one we got from the dad. In fact, and this might sound a little weird, but just before my dad's sperm fertilized my mom's egg, this DNA was present in that sperm. And this mom's DNA was present in her egg. And then when fertilization happened, the two DNA came into one cell. And then that single cell started dividing. And every time it divided, a copy of this DNA was made. Which makes sense, right? You don't want to lose things like these. And so as the cell kept on dividing and dividing and dividing, I started growing and growing and growing. And using this very instruction manual, I was built. And this might sound silly, but this is the reason why human babies grow into humans and dog babies grow into dogs. Anyways, before we talk about genes, let me tell you one thing over here. Whenever a cell gets divided, I said that the DNA needs to get copied, right? It turns out copying DNA like this, when the DNA is in this form, is very difficult. So when the cell is ready to divide, the DNAs start getting coiled up in a very tightly condensed, condensed coil, okay? And this coil of DNA, tight coil of DNA, and a bunch of stuff gets attached to it to make this coil happen. But anyways, this coil of DNA is what we call chromosomes. Chromosomes, okay? So chromosomes are Think of them as basically coiled up versions of the DNA. And this is why most of the time we use the word chromosomes and DNA interchangeably, okay? 
Anyways, now let's talk about genes. What exactly are genes? Genes are portions of DNA. Not the entire DNA, but these are portions of DNA which carry instructions to make a specific action. Basically, it carries instruction to make a specific protein. For example, what I mean is, let's say this section of DNA contains the recipe or contains the instructions to build a protein which eventually makes the eye color. Then we will say this is the eye color gene. This is the eye color gene. And let's say some other portion of the DNA, this portion of DNA contains the instructions to make a protein uh, which say makes up our hair. So then we'll call this as the hair shape gene. Now I'm making these names up, okay? In reality, the names of the genes are pretty boring. And so you see, genes are basically portions of DNA that contain instruction to build a specific protein. It's these proteins eventually that end up building you. Remember, your body is mostly made of water, fat, and proteins. And the instruction to build these proteins are given by these genes. I like to think of this as a robot building kit, which might include a long instruction manual to tell you how to build this robot exactly. Then this instruction manual represents the DNA. But if you open it, Let's say each page gives you specific instructions of how to build a specific part of that robot. Maybe one page tells you how to build uh, the lens of the eye that makes up the robot. Another page might tell you what, you know, how to build a particular screw, something like that. Then each page we will call as a gene. So the whole book is like the DNA. The pages which contain the instructions for specific things are like the genes. Anyways, Remember that genes contain instructions to build proteins. And we have two copies of them. One we have dad's copy and one we have mom's copy. So this might bring another question. If we have two set of instructions, then what does our body do? Well, this is where the concept of dominance and recessiveness comes into the picture that we may have learned of from Mendel's experiment. So for example, let's say the dad's copy of the gene makes up a protein which gives us brown color of the eye. And let's say mom's copy would give us blue color of the eye. Then what color will our eye get, brown or blue? Well, it turns out that brown is the dominant version of that gene and so it'll be brown. But I always wondered, how does this dominance and recessiveness work? But well, I'm going to oversimplify it over here, okay, just to get the idea. So let's say that dad's eye color, dad's gene gives a protein which makes our eyes brown, brown pigment. Then mom's gene doesn't give blue pigment. What does mom's gene do, you know? It creates a protein that doesn't do anything. Think of them as a broken protein. It doesn't give any pigment to the eye. And when your eyes receive no pigment, surprisingly, they look blue. And if you're wondering why, why don't they just look transparent? Why do they look blue if they have no pigment? That's a little bit of physics actually. It's called a scattering of light. It's the same reason why sky, which is made of no color, looks blue, okay? But anyways, anyways, that's some physics. Anyway, so if your eyes receive no pigments, it'll look blue. Now think about this. Your dad's gene is gonna make this protein and your mom's gene is gonna make these proteins. Both the proteins do, do get built. But because brown color goes to the eye, your eye will end up looking brown. And so now do you see that if you just have one of this gene, which gives you brown pigment, then regardless of what the other is, your eyes will end up looking brown. That's the reason we say brown is a dominant version of that gene. And so this means if you want your eyes to look blue in color, then both the version of the genes must be like this. They must make broken proteins which do not give you any pigment. Only then they will look blue. But remember, I have definitely oversimplified things over here, okay? For example, one thing I didn't tell you earlier is that all your instructions are not found on one single strand of DNA. In fact, in humans, it turns out that your instructions to build your body is spread out over 23 such different strands. 
And so your cells contain 23 DNA strands from your dad, 23 from your mom, giving you a total 46 DNA strands. Or you can also say you will have 46 chromosomes. Different animals can have different numbers, okay? Secondly, I've drawn these threads to be pretty short over here, but in reality, if you were to take this entire DNA strand and lay them out, turns out it can be about two to three meters long, containing about 20 to 25,000 genes. So yeah, they are highly coiled up inside our cells. Another thing is, in most cases, a single gene is not responsible for how any part of you looks. For example, when it comes to eye color, it's decided by about 16 genes which are spread over different different chromosomes or different different DNA strands. So yeah, things are really pretty complicated. But at least it gives us some sense of why we resemble our parents now, right? Because the instruction manual, the DNA to build our body, directly is a copy of our parents' DNA. But then why don't we look exactly like any of our parents? Well, that's because we have two set of them. So some part of our body is built from the instructions of dad's genes, dominant ones, and some other parts of our body are built from the instructions of our mom's dominant genes. And so it's this combo that makes us resemble our parents, but not exactly like them. We are unique. So we can thank sexual reproduction for this uniqueness. I mean, think about it. In asexual reproduction, there's only one parent. And so the kid will just get one copy of this DNA. So the kid will look exactly like his parent. So sexual reproduction makes us unique. All right, so that's pretty much it, okay? So let's see if we can summarize and recall what we learned. So here are some questions for you. Can you recall what a DNA is and where is it found exactly inside a cell? What are chromosomes? How many chromosomes do human cells have? What are genes? And finally, what is the main advantage of sexual reproduction over asexual reproduction? If you have difficulty in answering any of these, don't worry, just go back and revisit the video.